नेक्स्ट ऑर्थोगनल सिस्टम इज सिलेंड्रिकल कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम इट्स कॉर्डिनेट्स आर रो फाइ एंड जेड हियर रो इज कॉल्ड रेडियस ऑफ द सिलेंडर फॉर दिस वी कंसिडर अ सर्कुलर सिलेंडर दैट इज प्लेस इन द कार्टिशियन कॉर्डिनेट सिस्टम दैट इज एक्स वाई जेड एक्सिस and the base of this cylinder is placed on xy plane that is z equals to 0 and its center is at origin so here rho represent radius of a cylinder now phi phi is the angle made by rho with respect to x axis so phi angle is always considered with respect to x axis that is to be noted as important point and z z is called height of the cylinder as shown in figure the base of the cylinder is at z equals to 0 that is on xy plane so the height of the cylinder is with respect to z axis and we call height as z coordinate next is range of cylindrical coordinates as the radius is always positive and increases towards plus infinity but less than infinity which means it must have a finite value so the range of rho is Greater or equals to zero, but less than infinity. And the range of phi is from zero to two pi. That is circular orientation of angle phi with respect to x-axis. And the range of z is greater than minus infinity, but less than plus infinity. As the circular cylindrical coordinate system is an orthogonal system, its coordinates having its corresponding unit vectors. That is denoted by unit vector rho. unit vector phi and unit vector z now in order to understand unit vector rho we keep other two coordinates constant that is phi and z and increase radius rho in the increasing direction of radius which we represent as unit vector a rho next we represent unit vector phi for this we fix coordinates rho and z and increase the value of phi since phi angle is made with respect to x axis and increased circularly so the unit vector is represented tangentially to the curved surface of the cylinder and the range of phi is from 0 to 2 pi radian similarly to represent unit vector z we keep rho and phi constant and increase the height of the cylinder that is in the direction of z so unit vector z is along z axis now as we see top view of the cylinder here unit vector rho and unit vector phi are mutually perpendicular to each other also unit vector z is perpendicular to both unit vector rho and unit vector phi so it is concluded that circular cylindrical coordinate system is an orthogonal system in cylindrical coordinate system that is rho phi z we first discuss the differential length denoted by dl vector for this we mark a point p on the cylindrical surface basically at the corner because at this point we mark unit vectors very precisely unit vector rho in the increasing direction of radius rho unit vector phi in the increasing direction is circularly or tangentially but perpendicular to unit vector rho also unit vector z along increasing height of the cylinder and this unit vector z is also perpendicular with respect to unit vector rho and unit vector phi now the coordinates of point p is rho phi and z along which there are corresponding unit vectors all are mutually perpendicular to each other and in order to determine differential length dl vector we take another point q that is nearer to point p with some differential increase in coordinates differential increase in radius rho is rho plus d rho while the differential increase in phi is phi plus rho d phi this is explained in this figure since the angle phi is made by the radius rho with respect to x axis and the small change in phi that is d phi makes an arc length this arc length is equals to rho d phi 
So the differential increase in phi is phi plus rho d phi. And differential increase in z is simply be z plus dz. That is same as in the case of Cartesian coordinate system. Now we can represent differential length dl vector that is directed from point P to point Q. So dl vector is equals to final coordinates minus initial coordinates that is rho plus d rho, phi plus rho d phi, z plus dz minus rho phi and z. After subtracting dl vector having coordinates d rho, rho d phi and dz. And in terms of unit vectors, dl vector is equals to d rho unit vector rho plus rho d phi unit vector phi plus dz unit vector z. Now the question arises, what is the suitable direction in which all the three coordinates are changed by some differential quantity? To understand this, we again consider a solid body in cylindrical coordinate system that is shown in figure which represent all the differential increase in quantities. Here we first focus on xy plane that is z equals to 0. And here radius rho is increased by some differential quantity t rho on the xy plane. Similarly, angle phi is increased by rho d phi. Here rho d phi is called arc length. And to show Differential increase in z, we project the surface d rho into rho d phi to some height that is from z to z plus dz. Using this projection, we have a solid curve body in cylindrical coordinate system in which rho is increased by rho plus d rho, phi is increased by phi plus rho d phi, and z is increased by z plus dz. Now, as we move from point A to C and project these points on xy plane, we find a same point, which means radius rho and angle phi is constant, but only z varies from point A to C. So, as we move from point A to C, only one coordinate that is z changes, while other two coordinates rho and phi kept constant. Similarly, when we move from point C to B, here z coordinate is constant. Also when project these points on xy plane we find that angle phi corresponding to these points and with respect to x axis also remains constant. But only radius rho coordinate changed from point C to point B. Now when we move along a curved path that is from B to D here coordinates height z and radius rho remains constant. Only angle phi varies from point B to D. So it conclude that when we move along the corners of the solid curve body, two of the coordinates remains constant, only one coordinate changes. That is, when we move from A to C, z coordinate changes, that is height. When we move from point C to B, rho coordinates changes that is radius and when we move from point b to d angle phi coordinates changes with respect to x axis and in order to determine differential length dl vector we take two points such that all the three coordinate changes by some differential quantity and these points are p and point q when we move from point p to point q that is a diagonal path of this solid curve body, then only all the three coordinates changed and the differential length dl vector is equals to d rho unit vector rho plus rho d phi unit vector phi plus dz unit vector z. Here rho d phi is called a differential increase in angle phi and it is called an arc length. Now after represent differential length dl vector, which is a vector quantity, we describe another vector quantity that is called differential surface. For this, we again consider a curved solid body having surfaces along unit vector rho, unit vector phi and unit vector z. The surface having direction along unit vector rho is rho d phi into dz. 
So the first differential surface ds vector equals to rho d phi dz unit vector rho. And this is a curved surface of the cylinder. So in the cylindrical coordinate system, the curved surface of a cylinder having a direction along unit vector rho. And its value is rho d phi into dz. Second differential surface is along unit vector phi that is directed tangentially to the curved surface and it is equals to d rho into dz unit vector phi. Similarly, third differential surface is directed towards unit vector z and this surface is equals to the product of arc length that is rho d phi and d rho. So, ds vector equals to rho d phi d rho unit vector z or rho d rho d phi unit vector z. Next, we talk about differential volume that is denoted by dv and it is a scalar quantity. Here, the volume of a solid curved body is d rho into rho d phi into dz or simply dv equals to rho d rho d phi into dz.